let's discuss a fine structure of hydrogen spectral lines suppose we look at the spectral lines of hydrogen atom using a high resolution instrument like a high resolution grating uh, in a spectrometer then what we find is that uh, each spectral line uh, okay so let us say this is a single spectral line maybe the first line of bama series now when you look at a look through a high resolution spectrometer what we find is that this spectral line let us say this is a alpha line okay this spectral line is in fact composed of two closely spaced spectral lines a sort of double lines okay so what we call h alpha line is actually consists of two closely spaced spectral lines now this uh, phenomenon is called fine structure of uh, spectral lines this is observed for every uh, single spectral line of not only of hydrogen atom but of other atoms also in in other atoms the splitting can be more okay there are more electrons involved that's why so let us come back to the case of hydrogen atom so what is the reason for this uh, fine structure of spectral lines what is the reason for this double lines closely spaced double lines now there are two um, reasons um, so if we want to theoretically obtain theoretically calculate this uh, fine structure of spectral lines then we want to we have to introduce two corrections in our calculations um, calculations of uh, the wavelength of spectral lines or alternatively we can say the calculations of energy levels of hydrogen atom because uh, a particular wavelength is obtained when uh, electrons undergo transitions between two energy levels so we want to correct rectify um, make it more exact uh, we want to make uh, the calculation of the wavelength of spectral lines or the energy values of the different energy levels more exact uh, two corrections are required one is called spin orbit coupling spin orbit coupling let us consider what, what is meant by spin orbit coupling uh, let us um, for the, the sake of visualization let us consider the picture of Bohr model electron is revolving around the nucleus then uh, this orbital motion of electron electron revolving around the nucleus can be considered as a current loop so this produces a magnetic field okay now electron also has spin magnetic dipole moment so the magnetic dipole spin magnetic dipole moment of the electron uh, interacts with this uh, magnetic field generated by electrons orbital motion and uh, as a result this uh, spin magnetic dipole moment experiences a torque we know that when a magnetic dipole for example a bar magnet is suspended in earth's magnetic field it will experience a torque and it will be aligned parallel to the earth's magnetic field in the north south direction in the same way electron spin magnetic dipole moment is considered as a it, we can consider it as a tiny magnet so when it experiences um, the magnetic field produced by electrons orbital motion it will also experience a torque and it uh, tends to align parallel to this magnetic field so because of this process um, yeah, the electron in the hydrogen atom acquires some additional potential energy okay so what happens is each, each electronic energy level uh, so this this additional potential energy gained by the electron depends upon the spin orientation of the electron and we know that the spin orientation of the electron uh, there are two distinct spin orientation of the electron if we consider a reference axis uh, it, it will be in this particular case it will be the direction of the this internal magnetic field i call it internal magnetic field because it is produced by the uh, orbital motion of the electron it is not an external applied magnetic field so the direction of this internal magnetic field can be taken as the reference axis then electrons uh, spin uh, magnetic dipole moment or let us say electrons spin angular momentum has two possible orientations either uh, its uh, z component will be parallel to this external magnetic field which we say sz equal to plus half h cross or its z component will be anti parallel to the magnetic field opposite to the magnetic field uh, which we say uh, minus half, sz equal to minus half h cross so this up spin and down spin we call it so because of these two spin orientations uh, this additional potential energy gained by the electron uh, in this internal magnetic field uh, there can be two possible values okay so what happens is each electronic energy level splits up into two 
okay so when i when i uh, describe it like this uh, you may get the feeling that if you compare the situation with the seaman effect in seaman effect also something like this happens um we apply an external magnetic field and then electrons uh, orbital magnetic dipole moment interacts with the external field and each energy level splits up into different energy levels okay but there are uh, differences one is that uh, in seaman effect we apply an external magnetic field whereas this one is present already inside the hydrogen atom even in an isolated hydrogen atom with no external applied field this magnetic field is present that's why we call it internal magnetic field so that is one difference in zeeman effect the, it is external magnetic field in in spin orbit coupling it is the internal magnetic field what is the source of this magnetic field it's generated by the the orbital motion of the electron around the nucleus and uh, second uh, difference between zeeman effect is that in zeeman effect as far as we have discussed so far we talked about the interaction of electrons orbital magnetic dipole moment with the external field it's also true that in anomaly that is in normal zeeman effect in anomalous zeeman effect the spin magnetic dipole moment also will interact with the external field um, but in either case uh, in in the case of orbital magnetic dipole moment the the splitting of energy level depends on ml value okay so it's not simply double splitting splitting into two um, because ml can have for each angular momentum state ml can have 2l plus 1 values so if you remember the case of zeeman effect each l level will be split up into 2l plus 1 levels if l is equal to 2 it splits up into 5 levels if l is equal to 1 it splits up into 3 levels like that so in the the second difference between spin orbit coupling and zeeman effect is that in zeeman effect not only electron spin magnetic dipole moment but electrons orbital magnetic dipole moment also will interact with the external field and therefore the splitting of energy levels will be more okay so let us come back to this uh, spin orbit coupling so what is spin orbit coupling uh, electrons orbital motion around the nucleus produces an internal magnetic field and electron spin magnetic dipole moment uh, interacts with this internal magnetic field and uh, as a result it experiences a torque and uh, it's aligned parallel to the it's, it it tends to align parallel to the internal magnetic field and in this process electrons uh, acquire some additional potential energy this depends upon the value of this potential energy depends upon the spin orientation about the internal magnetic field and there are two spin orientations about the internal field Uh, up spin s z equal to plus half h cross down spin s z equal to minus half h cross so it means s z is parallel to the field or anti parallel to the field we are talking about internal magnetic field so because of these two spin orientations this additional potential energy can have two possible values a plus value or a minus value so each electronic level splits up into two levels okay this is called spin orbit coupling so uh, when uh, a transition takes place from a, 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 a higher energy level to a lower energy level there are uh, the higher energy level will be split up into two levels uh, this sometimes this lower energy level can also split up into two levels so there are different possible transitions so because of that uh, this each spectral line will be split up into uh, closely spaced double lines okay so that is spin orbit coupling and uh, i talked about two corrections in our calculation so we can see that because of this spin orbit coupling the energy values of hydrogen atom will change each energy level will split up into two levels so we need to do that calculation and the second correction is called relativistic correction relativistic correction see um, our calculations of hydrogen atoms so far um whether we used bohr atom model or we used uh, uh, schrodinger equation quantum model quantum theory model we have used non relativistic calculation remember schrodinger equation is a non relativistic wave equation so why are we uh, are we justified to use non relativistic calculation yes because uh, electrons uh, velocity in in hydrogen atom the electrons orbital velocity is of the order of 10 raised to 6 meter per second this we have Uh, mentioned when we discussed bohr atom model so uh, if this is of the order of 10 raised to 6 meter per second uh, this is small very small compared to the speed of light in vacuum which is of the order of 10 raised to 8 meter per second so we are justified to use non relativistic calculation but still there is some error we know that in any non relativistic calculation there is an error so here if we use relativistic calculation then the energy values will be more exact so correspondingly the wavelength of the spectral lines will be more exact 
So if you incorporate these two corrections, spin orbit coupling and relativistic correction, uh, incidentally there the magnitudes of these two corrections are uh, of same order. Okay. So the, whatever be the additional correction contributed by spin orbit coupling, its value is uh, almost the same as uh, the, the correction uh, obtained by including relativistic calculation. Okay, so these are of the same order, these two corrections. So if you incorporate these two corrections, we can exactly um, do uh, calculate, uh, recalculate the energy values of hydrogen atom. And then if you look at the wavelength of spectral lines, we will get for each, instead of each spectral line, we will get two closely spaced spectral lines. That means we can explain fine structure of spectral lines. So in this class, what we are going to do is let us look at the first one, first correction, spin orbit coupling in detail. And um, let us come up with an expression for um, the, the, the energy level separation between uh, each, we know that each electronic energy level will be split up into two closely spaced levels because of spin orbit coupling. What is the separation between energy levels? We will try to get a formula for that. And uh, we will also do an approximate calculation of this energy level separation based on Bohr model. We know that Bohr model is approximate. When you, in order to do the full quantum mechanical calculation, it's a uh, um, new some some new techniques are required for approximation techniques like uh, time independent perturbation theory are required which you have not studied so we will look at uh, this um, we will get an expression for the energy level separation of these two levels and uh, we will get an approximate value of this energy level separation based on Bohr model and we will compare with the experimental data and see how we how close we are to this uh, experimental data okay so consider this situation um, See, uh, we are looking, uh, we are using a, a picture of Bohr model, okay, for the sake of visualization. Even though we know that uh, this type of a picture is not accurate. So, consider electron revolving around uh, the nucleus in hydrogen atom. Electron is revolving around uh, the proton, uh, let us say in a circular orbit of radius r. So, we are trying to get an approximate result. So, this is the direction of the angular momentum vector. So let us say the magnetic field produced by electrons orbital motion is uh, B, we, let's, it, we call it some internal magnetic field B and uh, electrons magnetic dipole moment, spin magnetic dipole moment is mu. Okay? Then uh, we can write uh, the additional potential energy gained by the electron is uh, U is equal to minus mu dot B. Okay, we know this equation from classical electrodynamics. Whenever a magnetic dipole is placed in a, in a magnetic field, um, if the dipole moment is mu and the magnetic field is B, the potential energy is minus mu dot B. Okay? Here mu is the spin magnetic dipole moment of the electron and B is the internal magnetic field, not an applied external magnetic field, the internal magnetic field produced by the orbital motion of the electron. Let us call this equation 1. Now we want to calculate this uh, uh, we want to now we are going to substitute the value of mu as well as b now in order to calculate the magnetic field b due to electrons orbital motion an easier way is to uh, use an equivalent picture okay so what we are going to do is instead of this picture let us look at this orbital motion of the electron from electrons point of view okay or let us calculate this magnetic field from electrons frame of reference so if you look at this uh, circular motion of the electron around the proton, if you look at this from electron's point of view, it looks like this. Now ele from electron's point of view, it's, li it's like switching the position of earth and the sun. Okay. Uh, so we know that actually earth is revolving around the sun um, in some orbit. Uh, but uh, from the frame of reference of earth, from our frame of reference, what we see is sun revolving around us. So in the same way from electrons point of view the picture will be like this electron is at the center okay and it is the proton that is moving around if electron is moving around the proton in anti clockwise direction from electrons point of view proton will be moving around electron in the anti clockwise direction okay and uh, this is again the direction of uh, angular momentum vector and also this is the direction of the field produced by the protons apparent motion 
okay so now from electrons frame of reference it's proton revolving around the electron so proton can be treated as a current loop when there is a current loop there is a magnetic field if you use a right hand grip rule if this uh, this is the direction of the the motion of positive charge anti clockwise that means that the same as the direction of the current so if this is the direction of the current then uh, the magnetic field will be in the upward direction so the internal magnetic field as well as the orbital angular momentum vector are in the same direction let us treat this direction as the set direction okay so we are treating this as the set direction now before calculating this uh, magnetic field due to the apparent motion of the proton let us uh, uh, come back to this formula and let us uh, calculate the splitting of energy levels uh, in terms of the magnetic field okay so what is this uh, magnetic dipole moment now uh, there is uh, this formula electron's magnetic dipole moment is um, there is the uh, the formula g some uh, gyro magnetic ratio or g factor times minus e by 2m into s okay magnetic dipole moment of the electron spin magnetic dipole moment of the electron in terms of spin angular momentum this is the formula where this g factor is 2.00232 uh so this is approximately 2 we can say uh, exact value is different from slightly different slightly higher than 2 and uh, this approximate value the, the value of g is predicted as 2 in dirac's theory and then in quantum electrodynamics its exact value was predicted and it was also experimentally measured okay now for the approximate calculation we can treat g as approximately 2 so we get uh, mu as Minus e by two e by m, right? Uh, the the value of g if you take as two, the two in the value of g and two in the denominator will cancel. So minus e by m into s. So we can see that the spin magnetic dipole moment of the electron is in opposite direction to its spin angular momentum, right? Uh, so if we substitute this value in equation one, let's call this equation two. Okay, if we substitute equation two in equation one. the additional magnetic potential energy of the electron is uh, the two minus signs will cancel so we get uh, e by m into s dot b okay now uh, we have taken uh, the direction of the magnetic field as the set direction okay so this is the direction of the magnetic field and this is also the z direction suppose the spin direction the the spin angular momentum is directed like this making an angle theta with the the z direction uh, if the spin angular momentum vector is like this then the mag spin magnetic dipole moment will be exactly opposite to that okay like this okay now if we take a projection to the z axis okay this will be the z component of the uh, spin magnetic dipole moment. this s set now this s set is nothing but s cos theta right this is equal to uh, s cos theta so this formula uh, i can rewrite as e by m into this s dot b i can write as s b cos theta or s cos theta into b and uh, s, uh, the magnitude of b s cos theta into the magnitude of b and instead of this s cos theta i can write as s set Okay, so this is e by m s set into b. So what are the two possible s set values for the electron? Uh, s set can be either plus half h cross or minus half h cross. So plus or minus half h cross. When uh, s set is parallel to z direction, okay, it is plus half h cross. When s set is along minus z direction, that means anti parallel to the the magnetic field uh, s z is minus half h cross so when s z is plus half h cross we can say that s z and magnetic field are parallel or s z and uh, electrons orbital angular momentum are parallel because uh, look at this figure electrons so orbital angular momentum vector and magnetic field are in the same direction okay uh, this direction we have taken as the z direction so uh, from here if s z is uh, parallel to l or magnetic field or z direction then s z is equal to plus half h cross from here 
and if Z is uh, along minus Z direction, that means anti parallel to the magnetic field or orbital angular momentum, then Z is minus half H cross. Okay, so Z has these two values. So let me substitute these two values here. So we get plus or minus E by M into H cross by two, plus or minus half H cross into B. Now this quantity E H cross by two M. Okay, this is called Bohr magneton. Bohr magneton. We have seen this in the discussion of uh, Zeeman effect. So Bohr magneton mu suffix b is E h cross divided by 2m. m is the ma uh, mass of the electron, right? So if I rewrite uh, this uh, additional potential energy in terms of Bohr magneton, what I get is plus or minus mu b. The suffix b stands for Bohr. Okay, mu b into b. Let us call it equation three, right? So this uh, additional potential energy gained by the electron is plus or minus mu b into b. Plus sign stands for Sz equal to plus half h cross, which means the Sz is along z plus z direction. That means Sz is parallel to orbital angular momentum vector of the electron or magnetic field of the electron, the internal magnetic field produced by the orbital motion. Uh, the minus sign stands for Sz equal to minus half h cross, which means Sz is along minus z direction. That means anti parallel to the internal magnetic field or anti parallel to the orbital angular momentum vector right so this shows that electrons uh, additional potential energy is either plus or minus so for each energy level so that means each energy level each electronic energy level suppose this is the electronic energy level then we can see that this splits up into two values okay suppose the electronic energy level is e its value is e then it can be either E plus mu b into b if the spin Sz is along Sz is parallel to uh, magnetic field or, or uh, angular momentum vector or uh, it can be E minus mu b into b. This additional energy can be plus mu b into b or minus mu b into b. So this minus case or this plus case stands for uh, Sz parallel to B or L. Okay, and this stands for S Z anti parallel to B or L. That means here the first case S Z is along plus Z direction. We assume that uh, magnetic field uh, or L uh, orbital angular momentum vector are along plus Z direction. So if S Z is also along plus Z direction, we get E plus mu B into B. If S Z is along minus Z direction, we get E minus mu B into B. Okay. And uh, so this difference, this is mu b into b, and uh, from here to here also it is mu b into b. So what is the difference between the two energy levels? The energy level separation in in the case of spin due to spin orbit coupling or splitting of energy levels uh, in spin orbit coupling is twice mu b into b. This is equation four. Okay. So this is the expression for the splitting of energy levels, um, the separation between energy levels in terms of uh, Bohr magneton as well as the internal magnetic field. Let us try to calculate this internal magnetic field from this uh, equivalent picture of apparent motion of the proton. So here uh, the proton uh, can be taken as a current loop and uh, this current loop generates a magnetic field at the center. Why at the center? Because electron is at the center in this apparent motion, uh, in this equivalent picture. So what is the magnetic field experienced by the electron? It is the magnetic field generated by the apparent motion of the proton at the center. So we from electrodynamics, classical electrodynamics, we know that a current carrying loop can produce a magnetic field at its center. So what is the expression for this magnetic field? So this magnetic field is mu zero i by 2r where mu zero is permeability of free space, r is the radius of the circular path uh, or current loop and i is the current. What is the value of the current? The current is uh, charged by time for one revolution or time period of revolution. Okay, Charge of the proton is E and uh, T is the time period of revolution. Let us calculate the time period of revolution. It is circumference by velocity. Okay. 
and uh, this velocity let us rewrite in terms of um, orbital angular momentum so velocity orbital angular momentum is mvr from this uh, v is equal to l by mr therefore the time period i can write as 2 pi r divided by instead of v it is l by mr so we can simplify this as 2 pi r square m divided by l okay so let me substitute the value let us call this is equation 5 this is equation 6 so let us substitute the time period equation 6 in equation 5 so what do you get the magnetic field is internal magnetic field is mm, mu 0 by 2r e divided by 2 pi r square by l so l will go to the numerator 2 pi r square m will come here okay so we get an expression like this uh, let me further simplify this so i want to rewrite this in terms of fine structure constant so what is fine structure constant um, the fine structure constant now the constant come uh, has got this name because uh, this um, splitting of energy levels uh, in the case of fine structure can be expressed in in in, in its term uh, in uh, so fine structure constant alpha is e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 h cross c we have seen this before uh, when we discussed Bohr atom model i uh, rewrote uh, the expressions of uh, uh, different expressions that we obtained in Bohr atom model that means orbital radius energy etc in terms of fine structure constant so this is a dimensionless constant and um, this is a very interesting constant it's a most fundamental dimensionless constant in physics we can say it connects uh, if you look at this formula it connects uh, the electromagnetism the the fundamental constants in electromagnetism that is energy i mean sorry um, electronic charge e and uh, special relativity uh, that is c and quantum mechanics h cross so e c and h cross comes here and uh, you can also verify that it's a dimensionless constant so that part you can check as a homework it's a dimensionless constant and its value is uh, very nearly um, 1 by 137 okay this also you can check by substituting the other values so i want to express this internal electromagnetic field uh, sorry electro internal magnetic field in terms of fine structure constant so uh, for that uh, in fine structure constant we have epsilon 0 here right and uh, c is also here but uh, so what i am going to do is this permeability of free space i i want to rewrite in terms of epsilon 0 and c and uh, this can be done because c square is 1 by mu 0 epsilon 0 c is the speed of light in vacuum it is 1 by mu 0 epsilon 0 so this means mu 0 i can write as 1 by c square times epsilon 0 so instead of mu 0 if i substitute that this internal field is 1 by c square epsilon 0 then we have 2 r e by 2 pi r square m l okay let us simplify this so this internal field is 1 by uh, in the denominator I can write 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 e by mc square l by r cube ok so it is equation number 7 <coughs> So this is the internal magnetic field. It's proportional to L by R cube, right? So once we have this internal magnetic field, let us calculate this um, splitting of uh, energy levels to mu b into b, right? So the splitting of energy levels is two times mu b is E h cross by two m. Its uh, value is E h cross by two m and uh, the internal field is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 e by mc square l by r cube so let us combine this uh, one two will cancel 
we can write uh, e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 then h cross by mc square l by r q ok um, yeah. m square c square one m is uh, also here from h uh, e h cross by 2 m and uh, so this is the expression we get now in order to introduce this fine structure constant fine structure constant is uh, e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 h cross c right so we need an h cross c in the denominator so if i introduce an h cross here this will become h cross square and uh, from this c square i can take a c here so this c square then the power will be 1 okay so this will be c So we have this. Okay. Or instead of e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 h cross c, if I put alpha, the splitting of energy levels will be alpha h cross square by m square c L by R Q. Equation 8. Okay, now we have obtained an expression for the splitting of energy levels. Okay, alpha times h cross square by m square c l by r cube, where l is the angular momentum, magnitude of angular momentum, and r is the radius of the orbit. Now, let us uh, in the actual calculation of this delta e based on the quantum theory model of hydrogen atom. It's a bit involved. Uh, because uh, in order to calculate uh, the, the, the corrections to energy levels we need um, the time independent perturbation theory and we also need to use hydrogen atom uh, wave functions so that calculation is a little bit involved so what we uh, instead try is let us uh, try to get an approximate numerical value of delta e using Bohr atom model okay so in Bohr atom model this uh, from Bohr atom model we can get I mean, uh, already we know the values of um, the orbital angular momentum vector, the magnitude of orbital angular momentum and the radius of the orbit, okay. Uh, the angular momentum is uh, n times h cross where n is principal quantum number in Bohr atom model and uh, r radius of the orbit is n square times a0 where a0 is Bohr radius, okay. So, yeah and uh, this a0 also this is uh, this n square times a0 um, I can write as n square times a0 is uh, h cross by mc into 1 by alpha where alpha is fine structure constant so in order to get this expression for radius of um, orbit in hydrogen atom in Bohr model you can refer my class in on Bohr model there we have expressed uh, this orbital radius orbital energy many other values in terms of fine structure constant okay so this is uh, the uh, the um, orbital radius in terms of fine structure constant n square times h cross by mc into 1 by alpha so let us substitute these two values these two values come from um, Bohr model okay uh, angular momentum is uh, n n h cross right and uh, this is Bohr's first postulate quantization of orbits and uh, radius orbital radius is n square times a0 or n square times h cross by mc into 1 by alpha let's substitute that in equation 8 and uh, see what we get so what you get is delta e equals alpha h cross square by m square c and l by r cube so instead of l i have n h cross instead of r cube we have uh, this okay r cube we have this so we have n square h cross by mc 1 by alpha the whole cube okay so this is what we get let us try to simplify this okay so this is equal to 
alpha cube will go to the numerator so alpha cube into alpha will become alpha raised to 4 and uh, h cross cube and h cross cube in the numerator will cancel uh, <coughs> we have in the numerator we have m cube c cube um, we have m square in the denominator so we had we get mc square okay and then we get 1 by n raised to 6 and there is an n in the numerator so 1 by n raised to 5 so this is the expression that we get it's called it equation 9 so based on Bohr model uh, we get an approximate formula for the splitting of spectral uh, energy levels alpha raised to 4 mc square 1 by n raised to 5 where n is the principal quantum number okay um, so we know these values alpha is nearly 1 by 137 fine structure constant mc square is the uh, rest energy of electron 0.511 mev so let us try to calculate the splitting of um, one particular energy level so for consider an example for n is equal to 2 let us see what is uh, this splitting delta is uh, 1 by 137 raised to 4 this is 0.511 mev and 1 by n is equal to 2 so 2 raised to 5 okay and this value if you do this substitute and do this calculation this value will be 4.533 into 10 raised to minus 5 electron volt so it's very small 10 raised to minus 5 electron volt so this much uh, splitting will be in n equal to 2 level okay so if you consider a transition from n equal to 2 so this is n equal to 2 level so it will split up into two levels okay uh, with this much separation between energy levels so when we consider a transition from n equal to 2 level to n equal to 1 what you get is uh, the first line of Lyman series okay first line of Lyman series so this calculation predicts that the first line of Lyman series um, has a, since the n equal to 2 level has this splitting into uh, with a separation of this much there will be two closely spaced uh, lines uh, instead of the first line of Lyman series and the separation between these two closely spaced lines in terms of energy values will be 4.533 into 10 raised to minus 5 electron volt. Now let us uh, compare this with the experimental data. Um, 4.54 into 10 raised to minus 5. Okay. So we can see that uh, our approximate calculation based on Bohr model uh, has yielded a value very close to the experimental value 4.533 into 10 raised to minus 5 and the experimental value is 4.54 into 10 raised to minus 5 electron volt um, <coughs> so is it uh, then how does it uh, happen okay because Bohr model is approximate we know that uh, this, these results based on Bohr model are, are not very accurate okay so how do we get an accurate or, or a perfect nearly perfect match with the experimental data the reason is that uh, this formula that we have obtained here for the splitting of uh, the splitting of energy levels by spin orbit coupling this formula is not accurate there is an error in this formula the error is that we have made this calculation in electrons frame of reference right um, actually the electron is revolving around the proton in hydrogen atom okay this is the actual picture even this is not the actual picture in quantum model but at least in Bohr model this is a situation but uh, um, see what we want is uh, the orbital motion of the electron produces a magnetic field at electrons location so an easier calculation is treat the, uh, the I mean uh, do this calculation from electrons frame because now the electron is at the center proton is revolving and uh, so we can easily calculate what is a magnetic field uh, at this electrons location because now it's a current loop and um, we know uh, the, the, the magnetic field produced by a current carrying loop at the center. It's an easy calculation. Um, but since th we do this calculation in electrons frame, this electrons frame of reference is not an inertial frame of reference because electron is revolving around the proton. 
it is uh, undergoing a centripetal acceleration so it's not an inertial frame so we have to make some correction for the non inertial nature of electrons frame okay now this correction uh, is called so we need to so because of this correction this formula is not accurate okay so the correction to equation 8 is called thomas precession thomas precession this is the correction to equation 8 okay uh, based because uh, electrons frame of reference is not an inertial frame and this pr thomas precession uh, is its value is nearly 1 by 2 that error factor will be nearly 1 by 2 so uh, equation 8 becomes a better formula is delta e is half times alpha yeah here h cross square by m square c l by r q this is a better formula this is a more correct formula so if we use this formula and again do this approximate calculation based on bohr model what we are going to get is only half of this value okay instead of this uh, 4.533 into 10 raised to minus 5 electron um, Volt. What you what you get will be 2.2665 into 10 raised to minus 5 electron volt. Okay. So this will uh, this will reduce to 2.66 into 10 raised to minus 5 electron volt. Okay. And this is only half of the Uh, experimental obtained value 4.54 into 10 raised to minus 5 electron volt. Okay, so based on spin orbit coupling, the if you calculate the energy level splitting, what you get is only nearly half of the experimental value. Why? Uh, one reason is we have used Bohr model. That's fine, but the major reason is that we have considered only one correction in the energy level calculation to get this uh, splitting. Uh, to to explain fine structure we have considered only spin orbit coupling that is only one correction in the calculation of energy values uh, if you also incorporate the relativistic correction then the relativistic correction will uh, will contribute uh, an, an equal value nearly it's the same value um, as obtained from spin orbit coupling if you add the two values the together the relativistic correction as well as spin orbit coupling will give Um, a value very close to experimental value. So there are two reasons for the um, to explain theoretically explain the fine structure. Two, two corrections uh, to explain the fine structure. One correction is spin spin orbit coupling, and the second correction is relativistic correction. So here we have discussed only spin orbit coupling, and um, if you incorporate this uh, Thomas precession, then this is the formula for the the energy level splitting uh, in spin orbit coupling. and uh, if you do again an approximate calculation based on bohr model uh, we get a formula like this uh, half of this formula there will be an an extra factor half for this one half times alpha raised to 4 mc square 1 by n raised to 5 okay so we need to add an, a half here that is half alpha raised to 4 mc square 1 by n raised to 5 okay from here we get this value okay so this is the idea of fine structure of uh, hydrogen atom spectral lines and uh, this is the splitting of spectral lines uh, based on um, the spin orbit coupling plus plus thomas precession okay thomas precession gives an extra half factor and uh, we have seen that uh, uh, in when we use uh, bohr model the splitting of uh, spectral line in fine structure uh, is given by alpha raised to 4 mc square in the order of alpha raised to 4 mc square in fact when you start with this formula and do uh, exact a more accurate calculation based on um, time independent perturbation theory and using hydrogen atom wave functions then also you will see that this uh, fine structure is of the order of this uh, that means the splitting of spectral lines based on Splitting, splitting of energy values based on fine structure is of the order of alpha raised to 4 mc square 
a more accurate calculation based on quantum theory, uh, quantum mechanics will yield the same order of magnitude, alpha raised to 4 mc square. Okay. Um, so again, uh, just remember from um, the discussion on uh, Bohr atom model, the in, in Bohr model, the energy values, electronic energy values, we can express as uh, minus 1 by 2 n square uh, alpha square mc square uh, where n is the principal quantum number. Now uh, we can see that this energy values is um, of the order of alpha square mc square. Okay, Electronic energy values are of the order of alpha square mc square. Now we see that the fine structure the fine structure over the electronic energy values, uh, the splitting of spectral lines uh, or splitting of energy values is of the order of alpha raised to 4 mc square. It is very small because alpha is <coughs> 1 by 100 that means 1 by 137. So alpha raised to 4 is still uh, very small compared to uh, electronic energy values. Electronic energy values is of the order of electron volt, we know 13.6 electron volt by n square. Whereas uh, this one, uh, fine structure is of the order of 10 raised to minus 5 electron volt. Okay, so it's uh, uh, several order of magnitudes less. 10 raised to minus 5 uh, times less than the electronic energy value. So, uh, because uh, this uh, fine structure, the, sp the splitting of energy values in, um, uh, in, in fine structure can be expressed in terms of this constant alpha, this name for this constant comes from this fine structure discussion on fine structure uh, it can be it can describe the splitting of spectral lines uh, in terms of this quantity that's why it's called fine structure constant but uh, going back uh, the uh, energy values and we have also seen the orbital radius and also several other uh, expressions in Bohr model you can express in terms of fine structure constant okay so that's our discussion on fine structure um, and we have seen how uh, it can be partially explained by considering the mechanism of spin-orbit coupling.